Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm your host, Shannon Skinner. And uh, I'm joined by Ellen Campbell, who is the founder, president, and CEO of the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness. A survivor of childhood sexual abuse, she turned her own healing and recovery into hope for others. She's based in Toronto and I'm so grateful to have her here today. And of course later in the segment I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for the top tip on creating a successful life and you will hear Ellen's. Ellen, it's so nice to have you here. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you so much. It's yeah. nice to be here. Now, as a survivor of abuse, what did it take for you to heal? I know for you it was a long journey. It was. I think with most people, Shannon, there's an aha moment. And for me, I was lining up for my pills in the Northwestern General Hospital. I was suicidal. And I saw these other people lining up. It was like a scene from One Flew Over a Cuckoo's Nest. I thought, oh my goodness, if I don't fight back, I'm going to end up like them. So I realized I either was a victim or an overcomer. It's a choice. And I made a choice then to fight. And that was the start of my recovery. What did it take then for you to begin to believe in yourself that you could actually then really recover? Well, years, uh, uh, several years of therapy, groups, and I bought a little recovery bookstore in downtown Toronto called That Other Bookstore. And right, out yeah. of that, I brought in a lot of major speakers like John Bradshaw and Raquel Learn, all the people that spoke and taught around abuse and recovery. So I surrounded myself with healthy people um, and then I just gradually, you know, started to heal. But it's a process. It's a recovery process. It's not a destination, as they say. So I'm still in process. Um, and I realize that I think I've healed totally. And then something will trigger me, and I have to look at it. But I've learned to see the, the signals, and I've learned to identify what they are and how I deal with them now. Again, it's a choice. But it's still a process, and people need to be gentle with themselves. They never arrive totally. You know, the, the term um, recovery is often used. I mean, why, why the term recovery? Well, I guess because it is a process of right. recovering recovering lost childhood really. Okay. I mean people that have been abused and I'm, although I was sexually abused it's any kind of abuse whether it's verbal, emotional, physical or neglect is also a form of abuse and really whether, whatever the type of abuse it is and the severity it affects people differently depending on their nature and their nurture nurturing but abuse is abuse and it's how has it affected you and so I think for each person it's different the recovery process is different what they need to recover is different but I think what's really important is to surround yourself with healthy people and to deal with the issues and I had been you know uh, in recovery for a long time and then I really had a setback with a, a traumatic event about eight years ago and um, I realized I still I had a lot more to do and it was like I, I, I really bottomed again at a different level but then I know also that I will come out of it. You don't die. You think you're going to die when you maybe have those bottoms but you don't. But you have to stay with the pain. It's almost like embracing the pain. It sounds odd. But I think a lot of people don't really move forward in recovery because they continue to bury it with drugs or alcohol or sex or relationships. Whatever it is to numb the pain. And the only way you really recover is to really stay with the pain and work it through with a trained therapist, with a support group. Um, find what works for you. But there's a saying, what you don't work out, you'll act out. So unless you deal with those issues, they'll come out one way or another down the road. So is it, is it true then m many people won't turn their life around until really they bottom out or they hit rock bottom and the pain is so great that yeah. they have no other choice but to turn it around? That's right. That's right. And I think that's what you experienced. Absolutely. I mean, I right. thought I was happy for many years, but I used a lot of different coping mechanisms, sex and relationships. Sex and relationship addicts, it's the number one growing group right now. It's how people use love and relationships as their numbing, to numb them. But um, yeah, for many years I, I, f I managed. But a lot of people, the breakdown comes sort of in their 30s and their 40s when all the coping skills aren't working any longer. And again, it's I, I think probably one of the most destructive types of abuse though is emotional abuse. Because you don't know that you've been abused. You know, if you grew up in an alcoholic family, 
you've been emotionally abused, but you may not know it. You could be what's called an adult child of, of an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And you'll have all the symptoms of an alcoholic, the, you know, the fear of authority, the, the uh, depression, a lot of issues. And, and you may not realize it because emotional abuse is so subtle. And if you're in a relationship with someone that's emotionally abusing you, again, it's very subtle. It starts just with a word or a look. So is it maybe neglect if we sort of look underneath uh, alcoholism? I mean, is it things like uh, being neglected and then understanding that neglect is actually okay, it feels comfortable? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, there's um, everybody needs love and acceptance. If you grew up in an alcoholic family, your mother or your father or have a relationship with that chemical they can't have an intimate relationship with you. So at one level, you are feeling emotionally separated. So they may be there physically, but emotionally they're not there. And we need that. And, and then there's always, for instance, in an alcoholic relationship, there's the alcoholic, but then there's the probably codependent partner that is trying to fix everything. So all the attention goes to the addict, not to the children. But you wouldn't know that. And until you, maybe years later, you've gone through several marriages, you might be an alcoholic or a drug addict yourself, you're depressed, you're angry, and then you say, what's the matter? I don't know what's the matter. And that's when peeling back the onion in therapy, you start to understand what's really happened. So it's, it's, a, it's much more subtle than physical abuse or sexual abuse. Now, I had uh, the opportunity to hear you speak uh, a few weeks ago at uh, the E-Women um, event. Uh, and you talked a little bit about uh, your life and once upon a time you, you drove uh, uh, a really nice car. I believe right. the story was that you were driving a really nice high-end car to the spa and today right. you're driving something very different. Uh, yes, I've, I, I say I used to drive a 560 SL convertible to the spa and that was my life and now I drive a three-quarter ton cargo van and I back it up to a uh, loading dock. Now this is very symbolic for you too in, in where you are today compared to what your life used to look like. Yeah, I, I had an amazing life from the outside. It looked amazing. It was, I was extremely wealthy, married a wealthy man. We had our own jet and I, I mean, traveled all over the world. And, but I remember going up an escalator in Berlin with all my jewelry and my expensive clothes. And I remember thinking, I've never been so unhappy in my whole life. So for me, the gift of that was that I know that money can't make you happy. It's nice to have your, your needs met and be comfortable. But um, that was another way of me stuffing. Again, I just, I looked great. If you looked at our marriage, you looked at our family, we looked like picture perfect. So from the outside looking in. Looked beautiful, right. right. And I remember just the week before I was leaving, they were taking pictures of my home for an a, a architectural digest. And they're saying this is where the family spends their time in the family room. And I'm thinking, we've never spent one moment in that family room. So um, I was still in my crazies then. When I left and I moved back to Toronto, um, I was still uh, really in my crazies for a few years before I got into therapy. And that's when I actually bottomed and ended up in the psych ward. And that's when I started my journey. So for many, many years, I functioned. High functioning people, lots of times, that's why they function so well or they need to be good. They, like work, workaholism is the respectable addiction. It's a wonderful way to not deal with what's going on and to, because there's no sense of self. When you've been abused as a child, you really don't have a sense of self. So yourself is as it appears to everybody else, who you're with, who you attach yourself. So I thought, my goodness, I've arrived. I've married this wonderful rich man. And he was a wonderful man, but we were both very wounded. You know, and of course, that's uh, a life from the outside looking in that many, many uh, people wish that they could have. They could, you know, have the life of riches and have your own jet and have the most beautiful clothes and be able to travel mm -hmm. the world. And yet you had that and you were unhappy. And I chose to leave. That's the other thing. I, it was a choice. Um, recovery is a choice. Love is a choice. And we choose to, you know, the life that we live. If, if we don't like the life we're living, then we need to make better choices. So I knew that I had to leave. I knew that um, I, was going, I was getting sicker and sicker emotionally in that marriage. And it was my own woundedness as well as my husband's. But when I made the choice to leave, um, <clears throat> I left a lot behind. 
And there's, uh, when you make that choice, it's scary. I left all my family, all my friends, and really started all over again back in Toronto. But I, I wouldn't go back for a moment. And uh, it's been difficult. But the freedom I have now and the sense of purpose, um, it's, it's really, there's been something good that has come out of something really bad. Now, somewhere along the line, you decided to create the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness. Mm -hmm. What inspired you? Well, you know, it's interesting. I'd like to say that I had this one-year plan, five-year plan, ten-year. I didn't. I started it in the basement of my house. Actually, when I had my bookstore, I did the first national conference for adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse. I thought I was one of a few, and I had over 300 people come from right across Canada, from the States. Oh my goodness, this is much bigger than I thought. So um, I did a second and third conference, and out of those conferences I established the agency, really just thinking, well, if I could help one or two people do workshops, not me myself doing them, but bring in some speakers. And that's all I ever intended, Shannon, but you know, through the process of many other things happening over the years, the agency's grown now to um, we service about 200,000 people a year, or about 130 agencies. But it did start in the basement of my house. And we are going to talk more about that. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, but before we do, I've got my Good to Know Minute. And Ellen, I know that you've got a great success tip to offer for my viewers. Well, can I, can I do it all in, one, in just one? Absolutely. But it is, it's all about choice right you can choose to be a victim or you can choose to be an overcomer but you have to deal with what's happened to you you have to choose to overcome it you have to find your passion and then just go forward with that passion and again if you can worry then you can also think positive things you have the ability to do both and then uh, don't look back and be gentle with yourself so there's several tips all rolled into one yes. great big tip it's a choice so thank you, Ellen. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Ellen Campbell. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner, your host, and I'm joined by Ellen Campbell, who is the founder, president, and CEO of the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness, um, who has really quite an inspiring life and an inspiring journey. Um, now, the centre itself, uh, perhaps you can give uh, me an example of, um, of what it's done or, or how it's helped someone. Sure. Well, just briefly, what we do is we provide support for adults, children, women and men uh, who have been abused. So we have a warehouse with 4,000 square feet full of product. And for instance, we service 130 agencies that would be something like a shelter. So a woman would come and pick up all new bedding, maybe appliances, toys. And then part of that program too is our Women Mentoring Women, Fairview Women Mentoring Women, where women come in. For instance, I have nine women coming in next Monday. I have two hairdressers, two makeup artists. We have two rooms full of brand new clothes, thanks to Danny Leather and Hager and Guest Jeans That's that great. donate. And so they spend the day. And um, we bring in other women to mentor and come alongside of them. And it was really interesting, the last group of women that came in, there was eight of them, and they got their hair and their makeup, brand new Danny leather jackets and clothes. And they went back to their, the agency, the shelter, and they weren't going to let them in. They didn't recognize the women. But it wasn't just the look, it was the disposition, the change in these women in a day. It doesn't change their whole life. But it just gives them some, a sense of uh, well-being, and they look pretty. And, a boost. And that someone cares. Right, right, yeah. Now, I know that you have um, some other programs, too. Uh, you've got uh, an event com coming up in October, All Women. October 6th with All Women. Right. Co-founded that with Michelle Peavy. Okay, yeah. And um, we have uh, Lisa Lisson, the president of FedEx, giving her amazing story of how she's overcome some amazing obstacles to become president of FedEx and Patty Fallis from Barter Network, another amazing woman. And um, it's really to encourage women to, uh, to see how to move forward with action, intent, and strength. It's to encourage women, and this is professional women speaking to maybe young women that are on their way up, or already professional women that want some more information, almost like you show extraordinary women, just showing how, how they can help other women. Women are great at supporting one another. 
Yeah, it is. It's true. I mean, there's a number of uh, women's organizations out there. Grow it's growing all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, from some of the experts that I've had on my show talk about uh, women in business, we have different needs, so therefore uh, we need to surround ourselves with other women, like-minded women. Exactly. It seems to be important. Exactly. It's part of the relationship building. So We're nurturers. We like nurturers. to do that. Yeah. Now, you have an... Uh, but a really interesting program or initiative that you're working on, right? Um, the, abandoned babies. Yes. Well, one of our programs is we bury abandoned babies. So the we we buried a couple of uh, almost two years ago, and when I saw that little casket, we buried two the same day. Is and this we in Toronto? Give them, it's at Elgin Mill Cemetery right. in um, just uh, in York Region, and Mount. Uh, it's part of Mount Pleasant Cemetery. They donated nine plots. Each plot holds five babies. They donated a beautiful monument where we inscribe the babies' names. We name the babies, and then uh, these are all abandoned. Babies. These are these are newborns that have been discarded, and for us it was the earliest stage of abuse to throw away a brand new baby, and so we approached Elgin Mill Cemetery, and they have been amazing. And then Simple Alternatives did an amazing ceremony. John McDermott sang. They released 85 doves. Those babies got a service like, I'm telling you, the, the, the highest members of the country I don't think are going to get. But out of that, I thought, my goodness, we need to do something. And I found out that in the States, they have something called the Safe, ha safe Haven Law. You can drop a baby off at a hospital and not get charged with abandonment. So we are advocating for that right now. It's a provincial issue, and then there is a criminal code change that has to happen. But in the States, they've saved 2,800 babies in 10 years. And I just don't think people realize there's two or three babies in Ontario that we find each year that are abandoned. And we need to, there shouldn't be one. Well, we don't always hear about this, of course. So. You don't, you right. don't, right? And they go to an unmarked grave as if they never existed. In a, you know, and so now at least they're getting a name and they're, they mattered, they mattered. And really, out of the, those children's deaths, Again, something good is going to come because eventually I know this law is going to come to Ontario and the rest of Canada. So th that, that's really special to me. Now, of all the things that you've done uh, in your career um, in reaching out and making a difference, what's the one thing that's touched your heart the most? The thing I just spoke about. Uh, Those babies. When you see that little coffin. Um, you just think there's got to be some something better. So for me, it's like the abuse. Everything I went through was worth it. If it if that makes a difference for that one little baby that we can save, then that's that's worth it. Sorry, but oh no, <laughs> just we'll take a moment. Yeah, maybe if we can just take a quick. Uh, I'm okay. Break. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, sure. great. Yeah. We'll turn it to something a little more uh, a little more uplifting. Um, success. Right. Success as a businesswoman. Uh, uh, how would you uh, How would you actually define success? Success. Um, you have to be at peace with yourself. I mean, I could have gone into real estate and raised and probably raised a lot of money, but I wouldn't have had the peace and the sense of purpose that I have. So I think you have to get up every day, and say, "Wow, I love what I do. I can't wait to get to work today." And you know, we all have our frustrations and everything, but if if you have that sense of purpose and fulfillment and that your life mattered, um, that's it. Now, that might not have, be able to happen in every woman's job, but her job is just one part of her life. She can extend herself in charities or other ways of reaching out and helping people. But I think for us to, at the end of the day, say, my life mattered today to somebody would be my definition of success. And if you had uh, a daughter uh, in your life, a young daughter who, who perhaps wasn't in that place, maybe she wasn't feeling successful, what would you say to her? I actually do have a young daughter. Well, she's 40 now. She's not so young anymore. Um, and she certainly went through her difficult times because of my uh, marriage. Um, I guess it's just, I would I would, the most important thing for me is, is faith. I mean, I have a very strong faith. So number one for me is, uh, is our spiritual well-being. And if that is in place and your spiritual well-being is there, then your spirit is good, your soul and your body follow. So for me, it's a sense, if your spirit is good, then you have a sense of worth and a sense of self. So 
to me with my daughter, which she does now. I'm very proud of her. But for a lot of years she was successful but didn't have that peace. That's the peace that I think a lot of women, men are missing. In, uh, we're body, soul, and spirit. And that's so a really important piece. It has to be all three. They have to be in alignment. In alignment, right. right, yeah. Well, Ellen, you know, it's been such a pleasure having you here on the show and sharing your, a bit about your journey and about your organization. And uh, I've really enjoyed it tremendously. So Thank you. I wish you all the best. Thank you, and I, I appreciate what you do. This show is wonderful. We need to encourage each other with extraordinary stories. I had to see somebody else that made it to encourage myself. So congratulations to you, too. Thank you. Okay. Well, for more information about upcoming shows or to contact me, visit the website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. Special thanks to Jennifer Wu, who's in the audience uh, behind the scenes uh, helping today, so really appreciate it. Well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. See you soon.